Good Friday afternoon or evening, wherever you might be. Victor, good to see you. Good to see you too. It's Friday. We're nine it's days, Friday. nine days away from December 25th. Uh, meaning? It's only nine days till Christmas. Ah, that, yeah. I... Yep, you see, lost in time. Lost in time. Doesn't seem possible, does it? Well, think yeah. twice. Tell me about it. Okay. Hi, by the way. Uh, thanks for being here with us. My name is Darren Pope. This over here is Victor Farsik, and we are the co-host of a podcast called DevOps Paradox. And on Fridays when we are around, which has been a lot these past few years, uh, we tend to do a live show looking at the news of the week and other things that may have happened. Now, with it being holiday time, Christmas, Hanukkah, you name it, it's all going on. There's not a lot of news. But I found one tool this week, and I want to ask Victor about one of his tools uh, that he revisited. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I've got one tool that I'm going to show you this week that might just make you scratch your head a little bit. We'll leave it at that. Uh, by the way, if you have your drinks, get them out because... It, today is one of those days. Karen, good to see you. Hey. Marcin, good to see you. Yeah, see, I even I even have my uh, special cheer wine since 1917. Miroslav, good to see you. For everybody that was over on Victor's channel yesterday on DevOps Toolkit when we had um, Vadim on, I had to think for a yep. second. Again, long week. Uh, that was pretty interesting. Just oh, hearing yeah. about that was a cool one. Yeah. Um, I need a sip first, though. So we can't get beyond the opening until we talk about this. And we're running out of time to talk about it. <laughs> until when is it? I, I, I do not know that part. December 31st, right down okay. here. I can highlight it. You can't see my mouse, but December 31st at 5 p.m. Eastern, which will be 11 p.m. CET. Have you voted yet? I haven't voted yet. I need to I vote. I did. I did. Okay, good. Good. So if everybody's already voted, great. Thank you. If you're watching this on replay, uh, go vote for us. Oh, there, I'll just say it. And there's other people to go vote for too. But in our categories, for these three categories specifically, podcast, top DevOps evangelist, and best video series, please, uh, please vote for us. We would greatly appreciate it. There. We're asking for the vote. That's it. <laughs> Dimitri, good to see you. Um, my machine is acting up a little bit. I upgraded to the latest version of um, what's before uh, Mac Monterey. OS. No, yeah, Mac OS, but it's the latest version of Monterey, and I've been seeing some oddities. Not strange, just odd every once in a while. I don't know what it is. Anyway, did you restart after the update? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Probably did not. I mean, obviously you get restarted during the update, but I don't think I actually went back and did a... Cause what I, I just need to go and shut down, right? And let it sleep yeah. for a little while and then bring it back up. I'll do that this weekend. But you were going to say something, what happens? Yeah, I mean, to me, very often happens is that it downloads the update and then it starts misbehaving before I even uh, say, uh, yes, I want to install, right? I think it's all writing some random things over there very often. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll, I'll, I'll check this weekend, but I've upgraded everything. I think I've got all my machines now upgraded. I haven't done my wife's yet. I've got to do that. Of course, she's still running Mojave on hers. So I need to do something. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm going to get her a Mac Studio. I know she's not watching because <laughs> she's, she's pulling out right now. Is that the Christmas present? Uh, partially a Christmas present, partially... I need to repurpose her laptop for something else. Mm. And she's primarily at her desk all the time. So why not have a Mac Studio? Right? I can I can max out a Mac Mini or pay a couple hundred dollars extra and get a Mac Studio. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it, all the all the extra ports, all the the extra memory, the even the base model of a Mac Studio is better than a maxed out Mac Mini from a memory and disk perspective. So I mean, you know, Refurb. just the the dongle, or the decent hub, not the dongle, but decent hub with additional ports is already going to get to a similar price. Right. 
So, and for what she needs it for, it's going to be way overkill. But now that means I would actually have a backup in the house. And that's yeah. the other, the other reason I'm thinking. So it's worth it. Okay. Speaking of backups, we had, uh, Christian on from, or Chris from Gitpod on this week's episode. I got a little edgy on the uh, thumbnail for this code anywhere with a guy and his <laughs> wife in bed. So it's like, okay, that I saw that and it's like, okay, this is a little edgy for me, but it's still okay. Right. So I, I, I felt safe doing it, but yes, there was a little bit there. So I'm still trying to figure out whether that picture, that photo means that she's pissed at him or she's jealous. Right. Exactly. Cause he's <laughs> able on his phone to get there and start coding. Um, or play Tetris. Or playing Tetris. Jury is still out there. True. Uh, you still like Gitpod. You just can't deal with the the web UI part of it, right? Exactly. I like the... And that's not just Gitpod. That's that's container. any of them, right? That's, that's code spaces. Any it's of them. Just, but to have it as a, I need something now, it's good, right? But it wouldn't be my primary from a UI yeah, perspective. So, I, I did use I, I did use it occasionally. Sometimes I'm in a situation that I'm somewhere and I need to check something, and it's not my laptop. And then Gitpod uh, with the web UI works like a miracle, right? But when I'm on my machine, I'm not using it until I, for whatever reason, I choose to drop Visual Studio Code from it, right? And I'm not doing that anytime soon. Exactly. So, but be, being able to have that that power on a remote yeah. machine. We keep on talking about remote. It's just proxying through. It's the same thing like what we used to do. You have SSH out to a machine, right? You would SSH yeah. and do VI or Emacs on that machine. Or as we've talked about as well, uh, when you're running Docker on your machine locally, that's actually remote. You know that long, long time ago, that's how I was programming. My day was starting by me SSHing into a machine, opening VI, and, and started start. writing code. Yeah. That's how it was? Yes, it was. People Probably don't believe us. sounds ridiculous to anybody younger than 40-something, right? Yeah, that's exactly how it worked. Uh, and even before that, we didn't even have that. We had just green screens and amber screens. And it was just there. Yeah. You didn't have to SSH into anything because it was just there. So anyway, podcast comes out on Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we've got next week is our Christmas episode, which is actually a little bit shorter this year sort of on purpose. And then the week after, we'll, we'll be back next Friday for sure, unless something really weird changes. The Friday after the 30th, we may not be here. And it's not because of Victor this time. It's because of me. I might be going to an American football game. Hey, hey. It's in my town. I've got some friends coming in from out of town. Maybe. Right. Everybody's just sort of debating because, eh, do I so want to go? Do I not want to go? I know it's not beer, it's, it, it can be soda, but are you going to wear the hat, you know, with cans there? Oh, the cans? Um, probably not, because I don't have any. If I had them, I'd uh, wear them. I, I, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me any. I'm, I'm willing to just, that kind of stuff. To, to make myself look silly, I'm okay with that. that I'm, I'm very, like, straight all the time, but that kind of stuff, it's like, when I do those things... People go like, wait, who are you? And it's like, I, I am who I am. It's just 99% of the time, it's this. But that 1% of the time. Um, anyway. Now, we talked about Gitpod this week, and we actually had Gitpod on. I saw a post from someone this week. That is, I lost my mouse. There it is. That was talking about dev environments in the cloud are a half-baked solution. It's a okay. very long post, very long post. And the links for everything will be down in the show notes later today, tomorrow morning, my time Eastern anyway. But here's his five bullet points. Dev environments in the cloud have existed for years, just like what we were talking about, SSHN, right? Nothing new. Everything turns into a SaaS, but should your development environment? This was your argument. I mean, my argument is in favor of having it as yes. such. I'm just not in favor yeah. of Visual Studio in a browser. Browser. But the dev right. environment, oh, yeah, I am. The third point, service availability can never match local host. Um, Debatable. 
That's debatable. debatable. That's debatable for one reason. Hard disk space. I Not cannot tell that. you. <laughs> but there is connection to other stuff very often. Very often, it's not only your tiny, small front-end application, right? It works with something else. It works together with a database. Maybe there is some backend. Maybe there is some queue. You know, there is stuff. And that stuff needs to run somewhere. It can be your laptop. But, you know, when I, when I get to the point that I need to install a bunch of things on my laptop just to be able to work on a single application, I start going crazy. I don't yeah. want that. Page-to-go pricing is for privileged people only. Okay. None of the pricing for either GitHub or... If you're paying for GitHub code spaces, like, like uh, the Pro version, right? We pay 48 US a year for that, I think. For, around 48. Yeah. And you, and you get a, a stupid amount of hours. You get more... I think, I think you get more than the 60 hours a month. Yeah. I mean, kind of... That's such, to me, that's such a low price that actually it would not make sense to make it pay as a go. Right. And then the final fully baked solution is a hybrid that works offline. Okay. Now, this is the part that I have the most beef with. Are we still talking about offline, online and stuff like that? I cannot work if I'm not online. Doesn't matter whether I'm running locally or no. Uh, I need Google search kind of. I cannot work if I'm not online, period. Or chat GPT. Oh. Yeah, chat GPT, <laughs> exactly. I need to, I get lonely. I need to speak with somebody. Yeah. So anyway, these are the five points. And then he drills in. This is a very long post. If you look over in the far right-hand side, you'll see the little pill is moving down. It's about that big. So he uh, he goes into his reasonings of, of each of his things. And cool. this may be his stance on it. I don't completely agree. There's a few points I agree. There's some points I disagree on. But uh, I think if you've not really looked into it and you're trying to find an all-in-one place to look at the pros and cons, this is a really good post. That that I can say mm -hmm. without debate. Um, so anyway, and they also get into how it should look for stuff. His, his argument, not argument, uh, his... What's the word I'm looking for? He's positing that everything should be using Nix, and you shouldn't be using containers. Okay, now, 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 now we're in trouble. I'm in trouble. Yeah. At least that's my. That's how I'm saying it, which I could yeah. be saying it wrong, right? So just read read the post and make your own conclusions. Did you do DevBox before? DevBox, no, what is it? DevBox, we talked about it a long time ago. But DevBox is the, that's. Is it kind of like a local environment container like VM, like something like that? It is from Jetpack, DevBox. So isolated local shells. So it's sort of like what you would do with Python and using um, virtual environments. And it's all powered by Nix. So. Nice. I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, I really don't care whether it's a container, a VM, or Nix. I just want it to be accessible. I want it accessible, and I prefer it not on my metal. <clears throat> right? Because yep. then I'd rather be able to have, have it packaged in some way, shape, or form, even though what we'll be showing you later today is on the metal. Um, anyway. Moz, good to see you. It has been a long time. Good to see hey. you back. Okay, that was DevBox. Okay. Again, not a lot of news this week, but this one from GitHub was interesting. Have you leaked a secret? Now they're going to be making it available for free, which I thought it had been free all along, but obviously it wasn't. I cannot tell you how many times this year alone I got notification that I pushed a secret to GitHub. Yeah. I and... Uh, at least until a few months ago, I, I had a free account. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what that what that. Well, I think mean. it's for the public repositories. Maybe we were getting it because it was on private repositories? No, public. You know, it was on public. I, I rarely work in private. 
Yeah, or I, I, I make le- I, I rarely make such mistakes in private, right? Kind of because then I'm more cautious. It's not a demo type of application, right? Yep. So what you can do is you can uh, once it's enabled on your repository, and it, you can enable it under vulnerability alerts, and it will see secret scanning. And then there it is. So that's to me. This was the biggest news of the week. We that's, we'd found some stuff. That's a must feature, kind of like yeah. cannot stress enough. Uh, independently whether it was available before or no, and who got it, who didn't get it. That's one of the top ten features any any developer must have. Kind of uh, absolutely amazing. Saved my life. Well, it saved your credit card, probably, <laughs> or company credit card. But company yes. card, yes. So anyway. Short post, but uh, I believe that's not available today. Was it available today? Yeah, so gradual public beta for public repo today. That is true, yep. And expect all users to have it by the end of January. So six weeks. So keep your eye open on your repository, especially if you have a public repository. Okay, handful of tools this week. Get bug. I was scratching my head, why do we need this? I don't so know. What is it? Is the truck that fully embedded in Git? You know, the... I don't know. Is yeah. that GitHub issues without GitHub? Correct. Okay. That's the easiest way to think about it. More than POC, not fully stable. But here's how you do it you would say git bug user create. Sounds like GH. Create issue, I think is what it is. Yeah. Okay. But the, here's the good thing, though. If you weren't using GitHub, like, believe it or not, did you know there are some people that actually don't use GitHub? But uh, doesn't I don't use often, rarely use GitLab, but I thought that GitLab has an equivalent, right? They do. They, they have issues built in, so does... Well, and if you're using Bitbucket, you're going to be using Jira. Exactly. So, right. kind of so. for people who use what's that thingy? There is the fourth Git for very Giddy? enthusiastic people. Gitty. Gitty, but the they have they have issues baked in as well now. Okay, so if it's not even for Gitty users, then I'm not sure for whom it is. So this this would be to me as if you're using Naked Git, right? But yeah. who who uses Naked Git? Some people maybe. Um, but anyway, so it's you've got all this stuff, but then they also have an interactive UI which is cool. They're working on a web UI. And then I think there was a TUI that they're going to be doing. But they're going to be doing import and export. I had never heard of Launchpad. Have you heard of Launchpad? No. I yeah, I don't remember who that is. I haven't looked at it. Um, I was trying to find... I thought I saw one more picture, but there's a lot of people working on it. Again, I don't know why. Right, because then, you know, if there is a bunch of people working on it, then there is, might be a reason. Unless the bunch of people are all from the same team, same company, then uh, then it's different. But okay, here's a there reason. Must be something. Here's a reason why. Going back to our earlier conversation about offline or disconnected. If I had my issues with me in the repository, so th- this is the part I do like about this is the issues are with the code. The okay. issues aren't alongside the code in the other big three, if you will. I, again, I'm, 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 I you like know, it. I'm, I'm a terminal guy, right? I like terminal for everything, but the issues is not one of those things. I'm not going through issues in a terminal, period. Ever? Ever. You don't even open them from the terminal? No, no. Oh, okay. I get the email notification. I click on a button. It opens over there. It's simply, there are things that I, I don't like. To me, terminal is great for operations, not great for reading, for reviewing, and all that stuff. Okay. Here's the UI image I was trying to find, which looks similar to what you would do if you had a Jira CLI. There, yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't have my notebook in here. Um, something I forgot to do today. 
Uh, so anyway, it's called Gitbug. And it is, oh, I didn't check the licensing on it. Um, it's GPL3, so you got to be careful. Uh, and it came out last month. Well, a version came out last month. It looks like it's been around for quite a while. But, so Gitbug. Um, did you know that Git has a built-in notes feature? Just built in out of the out of the no box. Idea. Get space notes. Different conversation. I don't have my stuff on that today. Uh, two things about EKS. This first one is for hardening EKS. Thus the name harden EKS, which looks really dumb because EKS is lowercase here, it should be uppercase. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this I had <laughs> trouble figuring it out, but okay. I'm there right. now. So again, going Thunder back to what we're, yeah, exactly. It was like, heart, what? But now, if you're running EKS, now you've got a tool here that will run the... How do they decide it? EKS best practices. Okay, I, I will use best practices because this is published from AWS. right? So if we go to here and take a look at it, these are the best practices for EKS. right? As published nice. by AWS. So now that can be automated, if you will. Good, right? But this one I thought was more interesting. The EKS node viewer. Okay. Visualizing that it makes sense. Okay. Yes. So look at this picture here. In fact, I'm going to click into the picture because it should get a little bit bigger. There we go. So notice that we have five nodes and however many CPUs. And it figures out the math of how much that's costing per hour and per month. Okay. And how many okay. pods are running. This, if you're running EKS, and what you can't see here to the right, let me go ahead and scroll over. It tells you how many pods are on a node, what the instance type is, and it's based on demand price. So you so can get really scared seeing that heck i am paying 3886 a month for this round That's numbers awesome. probably right this is round numbers but i'm okay with round numbers cuz then i can say why are we spending $4000 a month on something that's only bringing in $1000 a month why are we using <laughs> so but i have two comments about that first i hope that it actually gets the pricing from my account, not from some general pricing, because, you know, many people do not pay the full the, price. The, the on-demand, right. Yeah. More importantly is that that color scheme goes to my nerves because I have the impression that that's not really reflecting the usage, right? First, I thought this is so cool, kind of, it shows me uh, in red, kind of like how much is used, but doesn't seem like to be like that because it's they're all 100 percent yeah it's I kind think of like rainbow colors for no no good reason right yeah it's just basically if we look at the center part that's here you can see that's 96 percent. so that's just really a block so i guess it's building from red to green maybe it's because it's christmas i don't know uh, maybe okay then <laughs> i don't know i don't think so no and yeah i i, I tend to agree with you and we could probably we have a minute. Let's see here. Pricing. Pricing. Let's see what it says. They are pulling pricing from where? Provider, on demand prices, spot prices. So I think they're probably based on the instance type, then they're mapping back to whatever the published price is. Probably. No, because the, there are whole companies uh, that have sole business of figuring it out. So I'm right. Um, but it's it's cool, kind of. Uh, even if you don't get exact price, you have more or less orientation. Hey, this how much it costs, and it's free. So cool. Yeah, I mean, it it appears to be on demand or spot. Uh, so if if I had negotiated rates, then I I probably know my negotiated rates, meaning the reserved instances. So. That means they either yeah. drop thirty, what is it, thirty-three to sixty-seven percent off. No, wait, it's buy buy two get one free. I think is what it amounts to on the three-year. But 
Okay, so that is EKS Node Viewer. I can't believe I'm talking about AI. I'm actually going to talk about it twice today. Oh, I saw that one. So this is from Firefly, which we've talked about Firefly before. Yeah. Uh, actually, I want to go back to Maz's question here. Is Harden EKS, is Harden EKS compatible with anywhere? That's a good question. I would have to guess. If you do command F and there is no anywhere, it's not. Yeah, and in fact, I'm not even Because uh, AWS does not forget to put that it works with anywhere if it does. Right. But let's see. I don't know. I, who knows? And they're also talking about poetry, which is a weird thing. I looked up poetry. I didn't understand it. Anyway, let's go back over to A A I A C. Say that twice fast. <laughs> oh, golly. Get Terraform so module. I. You know that I thought it's a a a la C. No, it's A I A C. Okay. Yeah. Artificial infrastructure as code or something. Yeah. Okay. So just this drawing, right, or the drawing, the image is saying it all. Get Terraform module for Route 53. And there it is. So now there's a lot of different use cases for it. Get Terraform, get Pulumi, get CloudFormation. Nice. Your, impl your implementation should be next. Get Dockerfile, <laughs> get Manifest. Get Jenkins Pipeline for building... Node.js. I haven't tried this one yet because I've been working you know, on something else. What is to me impressive is that uh, Chat G, GT, GPs, whatever the name is, hasn't been around for a long time, right? And I already heard at least Less than two 15, weeks. Yeah. 15 different services based on it already. This morning I heard about that uh, you can get uh, lawyer advice through it. Uh, some other service. You can get medical advice. Uh, you can get lots of advice. Psychological advice. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's yeah. correct, but you can get advice. It's It sounds like it knows what it's saying. Sometimes yeah. it does. I mean, look, if you're going to, if the alternative is to ask your neighbor, then for all I care, this is, this is just as good uh, option as or better. It'd be like me... <laughs> If my mom was still alive, it would be like me calling my mom. It's like, hey, mom, what should I do for that Mac Studio for Val? Well, Darren, <laughs> you know you should think about it a little bit more before you actually buy it because you might be able to use that money for something else. Maybe something like food. And then that's the, that's the kind of answers that it gives. Query builders, everything else. Fortunately for AIC, there's a brew install. Again, going back to my, I'm tired of putting things on metal. I want to come up with a better way to do things. You do have to have an open AI key, API key, which means you have to, if you've already blown through your free uh, amount, then you got to give them a credit card, which we'll see in a minute. So, so AI C. I made a mistake. I, I, was, I, I thought that it's based on chat GPT. It's based on open AI. Mm -hmm. Chat, G Chat GPT is based on OpenAI. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I thought that this one is now the third layer. Okay, so this oh, one no, no, goes no, no, directly no. to OpenAI. This goes straight to OpenAI, and it's probably using, I don't know which model it's using. My guess is it, it's probably using the, um, I can't remember which one, what the name of it is. It'll come to me. There's there's four basic models for GPT-3. It's, it's the D one, because it's ABCD. I just can't remember what the D name is. Um, okay. Anyway, that is from the people at Firefly, which leads us into a little demo. It's Copilot for your terminal. So now GitHub Copilot is already now becoming the Uber for. So this isn't Copilot, but it's actually called Please, P-L-Z, Please. <laughs> and I want to show the code for it because it's Rust, but it doesn't matter because there's just one file. And I would imagine pretty much all of us can at least read this file. Single file. Okay. There's our main. So we're grabbing an API key, line 25. 
from environment. That makes sense, right? That's nice and simple. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't know Rust, you can read this. This whole Rust unwrap or else thing, that's really weird to me. Creating a new client, a little bit of a spinner thing, then it's making a post call to OpenAI for completions with these specific items and then whatever we're passing in, which is what we're going to do in just a minute. And you put in the API key in the header. Right? Nice and simple. And then finally, it, it runs and a couple of things here at the bottom. Right, so it's not real hard code here. If we were to dig into AIAC, it's probably gonna look very similar to this. So let's do a demo here. I'm gonna pop us back out of here. And yeah. I, have to share, I have to share a new screen. So share screen, and I gave him my credit card. So if you guys cost me more than two cents today, I'm not gonna be a very happy camper. Okay, here we go. Is this it? Yes, it is. All right, good. So, add to stream. Okay. So we have please installed. So we're going to generate bash scripts from the command line using Codex. DaVinci, I think, is the fourth model, the D model. So, please uh, show me the commands to create an EC2 instance using the AWS CLI. Okay. Let's see if it works. And it gives me EC2 run instance, image ID, blah, 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 blah. And then I could just go ahead and run it right here if I wanted to. Now, I don't have AWS installed on here. But if I did, I could do it. Yeah. I mean, you would still need to... No, you couldn't run it, right? Because you would need to replace the bar. I would need to do... In this case, I would have to do a replacement. Yeah, yeah, But if I told it more, so why don't you give me one? One uh, example. Uh, Jivadin, good to see you. Give me an example me, to run here. Show me all the pods in a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, hang on. Why? Oh, I'm not on the right screen. Clear. Uh, so please show me all the pods on a Kubernetes cluster. Is that good enough? Yep, go for it. Let's see what happens. Yeah? Yeah? Very cool. Crossplane doesn't have a CLI, does it? Uh, it does have a CLI. I mean, Upbound has a CLI. Upbound. Yeah. I mean, there is also a plugin for kubectl for Crossplane, yeah. But Crossplane is depends really on what you make it. Which may okay, all right. So it doesn't matter. Uh, G- give me something else. Give me something else. Something that you will run uh, from the command line. Okay. Uh, uh, show me how to create the backstage plugin. I'm going to freak out if it does this because backstage is a mystery. Yeah. Very cool, man. It's very cool. This is amazing. Okay, now everybody needs to figure out how to do something that creates real value instead of repetitive tasks like those. Right, so let's, I'm going I'm to use Moz's here. Um, show me how to delete a Kubernetes cluster. In AWS. In AWS, there we go. Well, it could be mm. if you'd use COPS. Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm not going to argue repeat. that point. Repeat, in, in AWS, uh, created with EKS Cuttle. With EKS Cuttle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Very cool. It doesn't mean you it's right. Would be the, the amazing next level would be if it actually shows you the prompt and asks you questions. Like, what is the oh, yeah. cl- name of the cluster? 
right. then it gives you the full command, kind of like executable command. That would be awesome. Well, that would go back into this Rust program because it's it's you're getting back whatever the answer is, the completion, and there's tokens there, so you, that Rust program would have to be smart enough to know, okay, what things here are tokens and what things aren't tokens. <coughs> have to be careful how you use tokens here. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> okay. Yeah. You want to do one more? No, no, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I need to figure out how to do something more useful now. <laughs> that was something more useful. Um, speaking of useful, so last week we talked about... Go ahead. I'll let you finish clearing your throat. Uh, last week we were talking about VHS tape. Let me come back to here. Um, so anyway, this is called Please, PLZ. And again, you have to have the open API, put a token in. I'm not going to show you my token. Oh, by the way, how can I do this? I don't have an easy way to do it. When you log into, or when you create an account in open API, if you haven't done it yet, the max, when you, once you, once you set up a billing account, the max amount that it sets up, at least in the U.S., is $120 per month. And it will give you a soft warning at $96 a month. I bumped mine down to $10 and $5 instead of $120 and $96. Because I could start spending a lot of money just playing around and then realize, yeah. oh, wait, I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> so anyway, if you do set up an account in OpenAI, if you haven't done one yet, you should. Use your free credits first. Set up an account, but then once you go into that account, set that set the hard costs. Because once it hits that max, that ceiling, it won't allow any more codes to be run against that account. So that's good. I mean, it's like, at least you know you're going to spend more than that. Unlike AWS. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, we were talking about VHS. And I sent you something last night, I think. Yeah, absolutely to where awesome. So we talked about VHS last week to where, and for people that weren't here, because there are a lot of people here that aren't, that weren't here last week. Uh, Charm. I know you can't see this yet because I have to find, there we go. So the, by the way, not next week, maybe next week. It could be next week. Um, I'm rebuilding the studio. I can't believe I'm actually hey. finally doing it. Ha <laughs> um, ha. So anyway, Charm which is the company behind all the different TUIs, uh, Help Me Bubble Tea, and there's a whole long list that Charm has done. They have this new project called Charm VHS, and it allows you to, re how do I say this? You can produce either animated GIFs, GIFs, I can't remember which way it was, um, MP4, MP4 PNGs, yeah. you name it. Uh, and you just create a tape file, which I thought was genius the more I think about it. But the one thing that wasn't in the docs last week is when you try to create a tape file, Victor, what was your frustration level at? I gave up. I was impressed with it, then I used it for an hour, and then I said, I'm not doing this because the amount of work required. I mean, you look at this example and you say, I can do this, but then you need to realize that you're probably going to be putting sleep after every command or every second command. You will be doing, simply, it's tedious. It's horrible writing it uh, yourself. But the one thing we didn't ch check, obviously, was doing VHS dash dash help, which I actually don't have on this machine. <clears throat> and there's a record function. So you say VHS record, it gives you a new prompt. You just type in all your commands. Once you're done, you type exit. And out the back side is the tape file that you can then modify. Exactly. Then it's easy. Then you change the things you don't the, like. That's fine. Yeah. You can apply themes. You can do all sorts of other stuff. But anyway, if anybody at home was following along and playing with VHS and had that same level of frustration, uh, the docs are actually coming in. I saw them in a pull request. That's the reason why I found it. It was like, oh, wait, there's a record function? Then I went and did a help. It's like, oh, it's already there. So anyway, VHS. Very cool. Okay. 
how did I not know about Atlas? When I saw Atlas here, the first thing that came to my mind was Mongo. It's like, why is Victor talking about Mongo? Ah, okay. No, no, no. Yeah, it's... Um, it's not that. It's not the best name. How do you Google it? I, kind of like... If you use... Atlas? If I do Atlas and DB... Okay, so if I was to do this, it would be I mean, Atlas, Atlas and, and DB. DB. Right? All right, let me do this. Atlas database. Mongo. There you go. Mongo. Okay, sponsored. Ignore sponsored. But the second one okay. is not. So that's still Mongo, yes. Oh, so, so it's actually... So the first one that comes up is actually what you talked about. No, but go up. Oh. This isn't the second... Right, but the, these are the sponsors. Oh, no, you're right. This no, is no, not no. sponsored. Only the first one is sponsored. The second right. one is still MongoDB, right? Right. And then you finally get into Atlas Schema. I mean, I had never heard of this. I don't know how I hadn't heard of this. It's relatively new. Is it? Okay, good. Then I don't feel like yeah, an idiot. I think that it 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 was it, it went public this sometime this year. I'm trying to avoid to say how many months, but uh, it's relatively new. Okay. So point Okay, here. We're going to find out releases. So basically I'm going to make you cringe for just a second. Um Aren't you uh, are, are you just as annoyed as I am that there is no last. Yes. Like, if just give me the far end, because I'm okay if I mess up and click that every once in a while. All right, it's like, okay, that's me, but give me the option. Uh, so it's about a... A year old. About yeah, a year old. A little over a year old. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I don't feel like an idiot. Well, as much of an idiot, idiot about it. <clears throat> so anyway, this looks amazing. It does. It does. Uh it's not very that I, easy to well let me let me say this not that i the stuff i dislike about liquid base and flyaway are just due to their age xml exactly right it's and back then that made the most sense okay. right so I, I think I, that I, now liquid base supports other forms it does like Yama it does and stuff. Yeah. yeah but still examples are most of the time in in xml and that's that's enough yeah. to piss me off Oh, this? Okay. I'll come back in a minute. So, wait. Hey, you know, what? another cool thing is that uh, it's it supports both declarative and version formats, which I thought kind of is silly because uh, I personally prefer, and I guess most people prefer one or the other, right? You want declarative or version format. And I prefer declarative. And then I had cases like, no, but actually I, I use declarative and then I, I put some data transformation or something is version, then it's, it's a great combination. And I think that neither of the other two big ones support both, right? Not in open source. I think their enterprise least, versions yeah. might. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Atlas. So this is going on my list because I have videos for mm -hmm. both local base and Flyway. And now I have a third. Okay. And I'm always looking All for right. something. It's like, oh, this is a great, another one to add to that sort of pool of Here's how you would do this. I do want to bring this up here real quick. Um, VHS would be cool if they added a feature to add comments while the GIF is running, right? If you could overlay. Uh, I mean, you can uh, you can type back or. Oh, that's true. Uh, something, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to have comments yeah. as if to visualize them, echo then store. Echo. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That would do it. If you want comment in tape, then you just create a comment in tape. Yep. Karen asks, which databases does Atlas support? Uh, you I name it. I use it with Postgres, uh, but and in MySQL for sure. I'm not sure what else. Let's see. What can I find here? Uh, try. I don't know. SQL resources. Guys. MySQL, Postgres, SQLite. Uh, SQLite, there we go. So you'll get MySQL, Maria, Postgres, anything else in SQLite. Which kind of, I understand that there are many others, but that's the vast majority of databases I'm seeing now. Correct. I have the impression that almost everybody switched to Postgres. Really? I mean, among those who want SQL database. Oh. So that was this week. Have you gotten your video done for next week yet? 
No, 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 no. And I'm not worried. It's in the editing phase and I haven't heard back. Oh dear. So then I'm always stressed about that if it's over the weekend. Not because I have to work over the weekend, but it's not ready yet. It's tight, yeah. That's right. Okay, a lot of people that are back today that haven't been around in a while and you weren't maybe around at the very beginning and you don't know, we were nominated in three categories. One was for oh wait, I can't do that, can I? Why well, isn't that annoying? You have to choose one or the other. There you go. It seems like that should work. Okay, anyway. Victor's Channel, DevOps Toolkit, best video series. And the QR code will take you to the um, survey form. It's a, it's a survey yeah. monkey file. Then the podcast, DevOps Paradox, for best podcast. And then Victor as the top DevOps mm -hmm. evangelist. This they is all for the DevOps mistake. dozen. Anyway, if you haven't voted, you can. Here, I, I do want to show this one more time, too, for people that didn't see this. Um, for real. Let's go back over to the... So if you go up to DevOpsParadox.com and you just go to DevOpsParadox.com slash vote. Do I have that one as a lower third? I think I did. I do. Right there. DevOpsParadox.com slash vote. That will take you to where you're going. But if you just go to DevOps Paradox and go to the top of the page, you'll see a DevOps dozen. You click on that, and then you can click on any of these three or click on the Vote Now link. It will take you to, let's show you what it looks like, just in case you haven't looked at it yet. It looks like this. DevOps Dozen, finalist. And then we're under the Community Awards. We're under sections three, yep, three, four, and six is where Victor is at, at the very bottom of six. I believe that's correct, yes. That's a curse it's, of having a name that starts with V. V. It's in alphabetical order, so it's nothing against Victor being at the bottom. Um, but anyway, that's um, that's what that is about. Why am I clicking on that? There we go. So anyway, devopsparadox.com slash vote. So we'll be back next week. We may not be here the week of, or for the 30th. Are you going to be able to get some VHS stuff done between now and next week? I'm planning to use it for the next video, so... Uh, See if it works or not. Sometimes next week... I have three videos in a bag, so maybe next week, maybe the week after that. Okay. It'll be interesting to see how it works for you. Yeah, yeah. Could, kind of. Could. At the end of the day, it's really... Uh, for me, whether it's the same... I mean... Uh, Initially, it's cool, right? Uh, but on the long run, I want to see whether it actually saves me time or it doesn't, right? You'll see. Yeah. We're scheming on how we're going to use it internally in the day job. Because we see, we see some, like, this would be cool if, like the, the one, which I'll go ahead and pull the curtain back on it. A lot of times when a new version comes out, we want to be able to replay, but with the new stuff, right? We want to see the new outputs. We want to see whatever it is. And that's always a pain to... What, you know, click whatever to do something. So mixing this with something like Playwright, Selenium, whatever. You know, kind of, I write all the commands, whatever I do, doesn't matter what's the purpose. I always write all the commands in a shell, in an SH file, right? Always. Uh, without even knowing what I'm going to do with it. That's kind of a habit, right? Uh, muscle memory. And I, it would be nice if it would just run the run a script and record it, right? And then it, then I can edit it to kind of make it, you know, oh, I want it to stop here and stuff like that. I might be able to paste all the commands from a script. I'll, I'll, I'll see about that. Well, you could just run the script from the prompt that the record yeah, probably. options, yeah, right? Probably, but but probably. that means you'd have to be echoing stuff out probably more than you typically would. Right, yeah, going back I mean, to what, what we're asking. the output of the commands, right? Right. I mean, it'll, it'll st it should show up. I don't see a reason why it yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. So, anyway. So, Monday, video. Cross your fingers. Um, <laughs> Wednesday, podcast. Do we have a guest for next Thursday's DevOps Toolkit? Uh, maybe. Or is it just uh, you? If I, don't, if I don't get a response from... 
a, a person I invited uh, by the end of today, then it's uh, you and me only. Okay. Which we'll is back. likely. It's kind of like, you know, everybody's on vacation. On vacation like now. That, so yeah. You might be on vacation for all I know. So it might be no, not next week. me. I don't know. No. Okay, there we go. I'm, I'm, around, I'm around all next week. And then Friday, we'll be back here. And then we'll figure out the week after there. So anyway, if you're here with us next week on any of those things, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, if we don't see you again until the new year, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, all the other holidays, Happy New Year. I was okay. I said this the other week, and even this is incorrect because I, I said I don't remember if it was here or on a different stream I was doing. It was like, look, the one holiday that everybody can agree on is New Year's, and then I sat down and thought, it's like, no, that's not true because January first isn't New Year's for everybody. Yeah, and also it, depending <laughs> on the country, it's not really celebrated or things like that. Like in Spain, New Year's Eve is not really a big deal. I mean, right. if you're young, kind of like 18 or something, then it's a big deal because every excuse yeah. is a big deal, right? Right. Uh, but not many celebrate it. Yeah. Anyway. Old guy But problems. in Spain, it's not Christmas either, eh? No, because it's Orthodox, right? That's in January. No, no, no. no. It's Catholic. What? No, no, no. No, no, but it's Three Kings. That's... Oh, three kings. That's Correct. right. Basically, the gift giving and stuff like that, it's three kings. Three kings. That's right. Which comes later. I, I have no idea when, but that's orth that's Orthodox in January. That's the twelfth day of Christmas. After no, no, later, mm -hmm. later. Is it later, later? Yeah, yeah I, Orthodox is just moved everything for two weeks. Right. Orthodox Jesus is younger than your Jesus. Old, yeah, younger. You're right. Exactly. Well, anyway, happy holidays to everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Enjoy snow if you have snow. If you don't have snow, that's a good thing. <laughs> we might have snow here next Friday, by the way. Hey. That's that's weird. It won't be here for Christmas, I, but it'll be here before Christmas. I'm going to Norway in mid-January. You realize that's the decision, so, right? Huh? That's a decision that you've made. It was made for me. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, it will be hotel, uh, hotel taxi. I'm not, not sightseeing. No, exactly. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.